The common method of tube feeding involves passing food through a tube through the nose down into the stomach. However, this method using a nasogastric tube has its limitations. Since a long straw is in the back of the throat at all times, even those patients who can eat a small amount from their mouth can experience difficulty eating. A method that's recently attracting attention is percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, or PEG. PEG involves surgery, where a tube is passed through the abdominal wall, so nutrition is delivered directly to the stomach. PEG has many advantages compared to using a nasogastric feeding tube. Since there is no tube around the face, it becomes easy to keep the mouth clean. Also, if the patient is able to swallow a small amount, it can be used in combination with feeding from the mouth. There's another significant difference between PEG and nasogastric feeding. It's the fact that with PEG, much bigger tubes can be used. Feeding through a nasogastric tube can take more than two hours at a time. In other words, the patient must lie in bed for a total of about six hours if he or she were to have three meals a day. This cuts into the patient's time for rehabilitation, walking, bathing and other activities. Also, since it only allows liquids to be fed through the tube, it increases the incidence of diarrhea and the risk of nutrients flowing back into the esophagus and causing aspiration. On the other hand, semi-solid food can be used with PEG since the tubes are much bigger. The feeding time takes only 10 to 15 minutes at a time. Furthermore, the dynamic peristaltic movement of the stomach when it digests food we saw in the beginning happens only with food that has a certain level of firmness and viscosity. Let's compare the x-ray images that show how liquids and semi-solid foods are digested in the stomach. With liquids, the stomach does not acknowledge that food has come in and the peristaltic movement does not occur. The liquids just slowly flow into the small intestine. This is the x-ray image with semi-solid food. Acknowledged by the cells in the stomach, the food triggers the regular and dynamic peristaltic movement of the digestive system. The food matter is strongly pushed forward into the small intestine. The nutrients can be digested and absorbed in a more physiologically natural way. So far, we've looked at the benefits of nutritional therapy revealed through diligent research. The goal of nutritional therapy is to bring attention to people's quality of life and to make their lives more enjoyable and valuable. Japan has long been referred to as an aging society with a falling birth rate. It's estimated that the population of those over 65 years old will keep increasing in the years to come representing about 30% of the population by 2025. This trend has brought about conditions such as a tight health care budget and increasing health insurance costs in recent years. By increasing the effectiveness of treatment, and defending against infection and complications, nutritional therapy can help prevent prolonged hospitalization of patients. Nutritional therapy is 
、で一つは患者さんにとっても長期入院しないから患者さんにとってもお金が少なくなるそしてさらには国にとってもいいと思いますねこれからやっぱりものすごく発展し、えー、人の役に立つまだまだ余力を残しているところだと思いますね。Nutritional therapy contributes to treatment and recovery by maximizing natural bodily functions. Something as familiar to every one of us as nutrition actually plays an indispensable role in the future of medical treatment and nursing care. Exploring the possibilities of nutritional therapy leads to making each of our lives abundant in so many ways.